Hi, this is Ryan Thomas with East West here with another Composer Cloud tutorial. And today we're going to be doing a walkthrough of the emotional piano demo that was written for one of the one minute Composer Cloud tips. And I do want to remind you that there is a comprehensive list of all the patches that were used to create this demo provided for you in the video description. So I would encourage you to go ahead and uh, download that and have it open while you watch this. But uh, that said, let's go ahead and dive into the piece. Now, as you can see, this piece is a bit simpler than many of the other demos. We don't have any key switching going on. The track count is considerably lower. And so today we're probably going to be focusing more on orchestration. And I get a lot of questions about how these pieces come together. And I really have to say that it's a different process for every piece. If I already have a melody line or a chord progression in mind, then I'll go ahead and sketch it out with whatever instrument is going to be, you know, carrying that melody or that chord progression. And then I'll orchestrate around that. But in many cases, I take things phrase by phrase. And that is what I did with this piece. This piece is built more as a soundtrack more like something that I would actually score to a scene. And you can see that the phrases here are quite irregular. You know, you don't have any four bars of four or anything like that. What I did for this piece was to take it phrase by phrase rather than, you know, just playing the entire piano track. Because I don't want to be committed to, you know, one melody or one chord progression. I want to, you know, play a little bit of a phrase, stop, and then consider all the ways that I could take it from there. And I found that that results in uh, much more interesting pieces. And that's uh, typically how I would actually score a scene for a film or a TV show. So having said all that, let's go ahead and start from the beginning. Okay, and we are starting off with the flautando violins from Symphonic Orchestra. It's just a very nice, light, airy uh, sustain. And we are adding the piano. Now, notice that I am not quantizing any of this. This is pretty much how I played it in. You want a piece like this to sound as natural and as human as possible. And, uh, you know, just those little inconsistencies can help to achieve that effect. And I do want to go ahead and show you the mic setup for the piano, because I think I did alter it a bit from how it uh, naturally loads. Okay, let's go ahead and add the strings. And we have violin one and two playing in unison here. So these top notes here are violin one and two, and these bottom notes here are the violas. Here's our chord with the piano. And uh, just a couple things to note here. I am using the Consordino mode in Hollywood Strings. I needed something that was very lush, very emotional, and on the lighter side. So I went ahead and enabled this mode. Uh, and it just really worked for the piece. And then I do want to point out how I have the mics mixed here. And this is uh, pretty much how I have them mixed for the other strings as well. Okay, and finally, let's add the Celeste. 
And uh, the Celeste is really just here to provide some additional texture and make things just a little bit more interesting. So again, let's take it from the top. There's that Celeste. Let's go ahead and move on to the next phrase. Okay, and let's break this down starting with piano. Now notice these big open chords. And that little walk down is important. So I doubled that in quite a few instruments, but uh, I doubled that in the strings with violin two. Once again, notice these big open chords in the strings. There's our violin two following that little step down. All right, let's add the woodwinds. And here we have that oboe solo coming in uh, for the first measure of this phrase. And then it's joined in the second in measure seven by the bassoon, clarinet, and flute. And the bassoon is actually doubling violin two here on that walk down. It's a bit of an odd doubling, but it really just worked for this part of the piece. And once again, I do want to show you how I have the mics set up for the woodwinds. Let's see, here we go. Here is the legato flute. So I'm using mostly the decatree mics and a little bit of the close mics mixed in. Okay. And finally, we've got the harp and the celeste. Now the harp is just going to be outlining the chord in bar seven and then following the piano in that little, that little line there. And same with the celeste. So let's go ahead and start back here. Okay, I think that I think that does it for that part. Let's go ahead and move on to the next section. And we'll just take it from here. And let's go ahead and start once again with the piano. All right, notice we still have the open chords and we're still pretty much in the same uh, register as before. And that's pretty self-explanatory, so let's move on to the strings. Now notice that I have dropped the violins uh, down quite significantly here. And you know, in a piece like this, you need subtle ways to build and subtle ways to pull back. And this is just a way to pull back. By taking the violins down in register here, we're basically removing some of the energy because in general, higher frequencies tend to suggest more emotional intensity. And when you contrast them with passages in the lower registers, like we're doing quite often in this piece, uh, you get a smooth, natural, emotional ebb and flow. And that's just a general principle of orchestration. So again, I've moved the violins down and we're starting to build from here because you can see that they are slowly moving up once again. So this is sort of an area where, again, I'm just wanting to pull back a little bit. So let's go ahead and give it a listen. And we have that nice little suspension in the celli. 
Now let's go ahead and add the brass. The French horn is just going to come in for the second bar of this phrase. It's going to take that melody with piano. More like a kind of a duet with that melody in the piano. And then let's go ahead and add the woodwinds. Now we have removed the flute, clarinet, oboe, and bassoon from before and added the English horn. And what's going to happen here is you're going to have this melody line that's being started in the English horn that is then finished in the French horn, at which point the English horn kind of takes a support role. Here is the English horn, and here is the French horn. hear that English horn, and now the French horn taking over. And uh, that's actually it for that section. Once again, you know, we're kind of pulling back just a little bit. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to this next phrase. Starting at measure 10. Let's stop there and break it down, starting with the piano. So the piano is pretty much carrying on as it has been. Uh, however, there is a bit of a move between measure 12 and measure 13. In measure 12, the piano is up in this register, whereas in measure 13, we drop it down. And that's just a, that's just a way to switch up the emotion. And in pieces like these, where you have to keep the orchestration light, you know, you can't just add more instruments if you want to build or subtract more instruments uh, if you want to bring it down a little bit. You kind of have to do that with your orchestration. And uh, this is a really effective way to do that. So let's go ahead and give that a listen. And here it almost feels like a resolution of sorts. So let's go ahead and add the strings. And we're doing a similar move in the strings. Uh, we have everything up in this register in uh, measure 12, and then we drop everything down, and we also add our basses. So let's give that a listen. Now we're introducing the basses. Let's add the French horn, which is the only brass in this piece. And it's basically taking melody with piano. Now let's add our woodwinds. And uh, the woodwind section is fairly sparse here. I pretty much just doubled the strings where I felt they needed a little bit more support. So here the clarinet is doubling the violas on that suspension. I wanted that to come through just a little bit more, so I added my clarinet. And I'm also doubling the violin one with oboe. And I should also note that the bassoon is coming in in measure 13 we're actually taking away the clarinet and the oboe because they're just not needed in measure 13. So let's give that a listen. Hear how that bassoon just helps warm up uh, those cellos. Okay, and uh, we are now at the last phrase, and there's a bit going on here. Uh, we've added the women's choir, and there's quite a bit going on in the percussion section now. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. 
we'll need to start back at measure 13 as uh, measure 15 and onward is a continuation of this phrase. And let's break it down starting with the choir. So we have this nice little ascending progression in the strings, the woodwinds, uh, the choir. And uh, the choir is not really doing anything too crazy here. It's just sitting on the triad, but we're changing the voicing as we progress. So let's just go ahead and listen to that. Fairly self-explanatory, and uh, we're just using the women's ooh patch from Hollywood Choirs. Now, piano is uh, pretty simple as well. Uh, there's no movement in the piano because I did end up adding the harp in this section, and if there was movement in the harp as well as the piano, it just would have been uh, a little bit too confusing, so I just opted to hold out the chord on the piano and uh, give the harp all the movement. So let's add our strings. Hear what this all sounds like together. So as you can see, we're only starting with the basses, the celli, and the violas that are in a lower register at measure 15. And by beat 2 of measure 15, we have added the violin 1 and 2. And as we progress throughout this uh, ascending progression, we actually end up dropping the basses entirely by measure 17, and you just have uh, the high strings as well as the celli in the higher registers. So let's go ahead and listen to that. Uh, let's actually listen to the strings by themselves. As you can see, we're also going from sort of a closed voicing here to an open voicing here, back to a very closed voicing here. And again, that's just a nice way to change up the emotion and keep things interesting. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and add our uh, woodwinds. There's not really much happening in the brass. You just have this note being held over from the previous phrase in the solo French horn. And the woodwinds are again just going to be doubling the strings where I felt the strings needed to be reinforced. So I believe you just have English horn doubling viola, uh, bassoon doubling the celli, and flute doubling violin one. Okay, now let's add the harp. And there is a little bit of key switch programming going on here. Uh, we're starting off just on the standard pluck articulation and then going to the gliss articulation. And finally, let's add our percussion. So yeah, I just needed uh, a little bit of emphasis on that last note, so I just ended up throwing in a single note in the glockenspiel, and of course we have to end a piece like this with a mark tree. 
Okay, so I think that covers uh, the actual piece. Let's go ahead and break down the reverb setup for this. And we'll start with the choir. So we are using the Davies Choir Hall, the rear room. And you can see all the pre-delay and uh, all the other settings here. For piano, we are just using the Northwest Hall, uh, the rear room, with a bit of a longer pre-delay. And for the strings, we are using the Southern California Hall string specific impulse. For brass, we're using the same room, but uh, this is the brass specific impulse. And then for woodwinds as well as percussion, we are again just using the Northwest Hall rear room. And for harp, we are uh, actually just using the piano reverb for harp. And of course, uh, we are sending almost everything to the Lexicon emulation within Spaces 2. This is the classic digital C with the 2.7 second tail. And that just kind of helps to glue everything together. Okay, well that does it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, uh, please just let me know in the comment section and I'll try to get to those as soon as I can. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you in the next video.